Hello everyone, Terry Welbrock here. Just a little tidbit before we start today's episode that uh, we are going to dive into some science on this and some really fantastic conversation on energy. And that seems to be a topic that's coming up a lot here lately on the show. And I love the idea that so many are starting to understand the incredible healing potential that lies within uh, energy healing work. So, uh, yes, this is just a fabulous conversation. I'm not going to talk long right now because um, this is 50 minutes worth of, of healing work. Um, and I'm excited for you to tune in and join us. So, on that note, here is today's episode. Thanks. Welcome, everybody, to the Healing Place podcast. You see the big smile on my face. I'm Terry Wabrock, your host, and just super thrilled to have with me today Lauren Walker, and she is founder of Energy Medicine Yoga and author of her most recent release, The Energy to Heal, and I'm just way thrilled to have you. So welcome, Lauren. Thank you. Thank you so much, Terry. I'm excited to chat with you this morning. Yeah, we're, we're, we were just having a fun little laugh beforehand, hence my little smile that uh, we, we both were like, all right, let's not do this live because live is, is nerve wracking. So <laughs> we're going the recorded route and uh, yeah, both of our dogs are at our feet and they may say hello at some point and that's always welcome. Awesome. He just moved aside to his window perch so he can watch the deer walking by and let everybody Aww. know he's around. So oh. <laughs> I hope he says hello. That's awesome. <laughs> he might. He might. <laughs> so, yeah. So tell us a little bit about your journey and how you got into yoga to start. Yeah. Okay. So that's a good one. How I got into yoga. So I um, went to New York University and graduated and decided, even though I had been offered fellowships to graduate school and all of this, I said, no, I wanted to just go out and see the world because I, at that point, was planning to be a writer and I needed some life experience. So I traveled all over, backpacking through Central and South America and ended up back in New York City. And this was several years later now. So I had already lived in Montana, learned how to ski, been a ski bum. Um, which uh, my husband likes me to say ski enthusiast. He doesn't like the word ski bum. I kind of, I prefer it. I'm a ski bum. I like it. Um, and I and ended up back in New York City with um, reams of paper that I was going to turn into a novel. And living in New York City, I'm not a runner. I didn't have a gym membership. Um, there's not a lot of things to do physically for exercise if you don't fall into those two things. I don't play basketball. So my roommate gave me a flyer for a yoga studio. And I thought, oh, yoga, that's so boring. That's for old ladies. You know, I'm, what am I going to do in a yoga class? But I had nothing to do. So I walked into this yoga class and it happened to be like the hippest, hottest, um, all the celebrities go to yoga studio in the East Village in New York City. And it was nothing like what I had thought it was going to be. And it really broke me open, body, mind, and spirit. I got on that yoga mat, and it was as if that 5,000-year-old tradition was alive somewhere in my body. Like, my body knew this work. And I cried that first day because people were, like, busting up into headstand and handstand. And I was just like, and the whole class was in Sanskrit, which is the ancient language that often yoga is taught in, or at least some of the poses names are. The whole class was in Sanskrit. I'd look around like, what am I doing now? Despite all of those barriers and all of my inner fears that I don't belong and I'm not good enough to do this, I felt at home. And I, 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 I never looked back. Actually, that first class was the start of my yoga journey. And um, I, I took a teacher training. I, I studied at that studio every day, like three hours for nine months. And then I took a teacher training and I started teaching right away in New York. And then I came back to Montana, opened, uh, I didn't open a studio, I started teaching, and then I opened a studio and a vegetarian restaurant, and all of these things happened, and it was amazing, but I was still a little bit um, very blind. I was still, 
just sort of tripping forward, feeling like I'd learned so much and had so much to give, which I did to some degree, but I was a very newbie. And um, the flip side too was that I kept having really challenging, difficult experiences in my life that I couldn't resolve. So yoga was great. It really helped me a lot, but it wasn't resolving the issues that I was having. And I, I, I'm kind of hesitating to short of calling them traumas, but really they were. They were traumatic experiences that kept building up on each other. And this is, I had been teaching now 10, 12 years and was really at a crossroads. And I knew I had to either go deeper into yoga, find better teachers, bigger something, or I didn't know what the or was. And the or was two different people in two different countries in the span of two months introduced me to Donna Eden. And that was the trajectory that changed my life. She is the founder of Eden Energy Medicine. And I turned into the field of magic. That's the super short story, but it changed the trajectory of my life. And through that work, I created energy medicine yoga, which has now changed the trajectory of thousands of people's lives. So it's a, it was kind of a crazy origin story. I love it. I, oh my gosh. And I watched a little YouTube video on your, on your website too. And I could see in in this video, it was maybe two and a half minutes long, but there was almost like tapping you were doing, like bringing in stuff that I've utilized. And so is that what you integrate that sort of healing work into, um, into yoga, like a yoga session? So exactly. I mean, that really is it. I um, wove together much of what I learned from Donna and then subsequently studying with all kinds of other teachers in this new vein of understanding field theory and quantum dynamics and, um, and energy medicine and energy psychology and really started to, the, the, the aha moment is understanding yourself as an energetic being. And once you know that you are energy, the next step is to learn the language of energy so that you can communicate with yourself in your native language. Your native language isn't English or Swedish or Greek or Spanish. Your native language is energy. And we never learn that, although a lot of it is intuitive and we actually use this intuitive language quite a bit. And I write about that in this book of, you know, have you ever just like, have you ever rubbed your temples because you have a headache? That's energy medicine. But you're like, well, really, why? And I'm going to explain all of that in the book. But so once you understand yourself as energy, you want to learn the language. And that language is tapping, thumping, massaging, holding, moving your hands in specific ways over the body, um, opening up. You know, we have nine energy systems that animate us. And each of those systems has very specific things that they that it does and pathways that those energies move along. It's not, you know, I used to think before I started studying with Donna that energy was this sort of esoteric thing. You know, in yoga, you hear it as prana. In um, ancient Chinese medicine, you hear it as chi. But it always felt sort of amorphous. Prana, is that like my life force? Maybe. And, you know, no one would could ever really tell me like, where is the prana? How do you use the prana? How do you get more prana? How do you direct the prana? It was like you could do some breathing practices to bring it down or medium or up. But it was very... I want to say slippery. It wasn't anything like I could really grasp. And it, and therefore it felt out of reach and it felt yeah like that that esoteric that, that only a few people will ever really understand. And you know yoga was originally taught like that. It was it, it was and to some extent can still be a very hierarchical practice where there's you know it originally it was one student uh, one teacher teaching to one student, never to women. Women were never taught yoga. It was very hierarchical. And a lot of hidden practices that a guru would, you know, give you these little secrets and kind of keep you coming back. And 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 that's not at all how energy works. Energy is um, is not hierarchical. It's holistic and it's integrated and it's it's very easy to 
access. And once I found how easy to access, I was kind of like, really? For years, I thought, you know, I had to have this triple PhD in yoga to understand energy. No, energy is like kindergarten practice. And so that's what I do is I share that all out with everybody. It's like, this is your birthright. It's super easy. And the learning of it might be kindergarten level to enter in, but the transformations that you have, there's not even a category for that. It is absolutely off the charts, the things that you can transform once you, once you really own what is already yours to begin with. Oh, I so love it. You saw me smiling and shaking my head the, two days ago. So I have this horrible rash that I'm battling and I'm, I'm bound and determined to overcome it from mycotoxin poisoning. And I, ha I seriously held my leg <laughs> because it's bad. It's worse on my lower leg. And I held it and I was just rubbing my leg and I was massaging it. And I was like, I love you leg. I'm so sorry about this rash. Like I promise I'm going to help you get it better. And I just was giving it so much healing energy. And I love it that I was doing exactly what you talked about. That's awesome. You absolutely were. That's really beautiful. And, and honestly, like that is how the dialogue begins. And it also is, um, really specific too. It's not just, you know, I love my body. I'm going to give myself a hug. This is a, a, a big piece of it for sure. Having an intimacy with your own body, but it also is very scientific. And so you said you're having a rash on your body. Well, that would fall into a very specific um, bandwidth of, of, of the work that I'm doing. And I don't, I don't know how detailed you want to get, but that would fall under uh, the metal element, which is, which governs the skin of the body. And then you can look at what is the emotional component behind that and the emotional component um, behind metal. The challenging one is grief and the, the way to balance that is with faith and letting go. But there's also really specific practices that you can do to, uh, to encourage that element to start uh, to come into balance. Because right now you have an imbalance in that, in that element, which is presenting as a skin issue. And so it's this really beautiful holistic practice that can guide you into what is out of balance and how do you bring it back into balance and that really is the whole gestalt of energy medicine yoga what is out of balance body mind or spirit what are some really simple easy practices that can bring the energy back into balance and then the body does what your body was built to do and that is heal and so that's really the flow of the practice and um, it, it's just been incredibly powerful. We've had a, a lot of just really magical stories of people finding healing and, and joy and peace again after really challenging experiences. And, um, and it works for, it just works. It just works. That's beautiful. And my, I'm giving you a big heart hug because mm -hmm. I know I'm out of balance, right? And so you feel it and people who are listening, the audience listening, if you know you're out of balance, it's it's sometimes such kind of like the what you were saying, you know, like trying to find Prada, like and grab a hold of it. It's like, what am I grabbing for? Like, like just reaching, trying to grab an answer uh, along the healing journey. So what beautiful gift you're giving folks by saying, hey, <laughs> I can help you grab a hold of that thing and find that balance and do the healing work. So. And it really is. I love that you use that, those words, grab a hold of, because that whole idea of energy, which can feel so amorphous because everything is made of energy. And so it's kind of can be also confusing. I'm energy. I really sort of feel pretty solid actually. So to get that understanding is one of the first things I think that that is that is probably the most difficult piece of it is to really know yourself as energy but the energy is in the physical body and so once you start to feel it and that's one of the first things that I teach people is how to feel it once you feel your energy that's animating the physical body it is it's like you've you've walked through the veils you've you've come into you know if you've ever studied another language and you and you get to that point of fluency or even that point where you've got a few words and you can listen you go into a restaurant and you're like 
I just heard what they ordered. I knew what they said, you know. Um, you start to feel that with your own body, and it's really exciting. And then, then it's not esoteric anymore. It's like, oh, yeah, I can feel this flow of energy. I can influence that flow of energy. It starts, the word magic takes on a different meaning because you are engaged actively with the co-creation of your own health. And it's pretty powerful and exciting. Yes. Oh, and I love it. I mean, I know we've talked about it on the show before, but I'll bring it up again is once I understood the science behind it of we are 99.999, however many nines percent energy. <laughs> and, no, no, empty space. Yeah, like looking, but but then there's what? All that going on in that empty space, right? You are a thousand percent or a hundred percent. You are only energy. You're not yeah. 99 energy your energy yeah. you are 99.9% .9 empty space because if, if you go down into so you you know you you have your physical body but and then you want to go in look deeper and you look at a cell and you look at the molecules right. in the cell and you break down the molecules are made up of atoms and you look inside an atom and what you see is nothing because an atom is 99.9 .9 to the whatever degree empty space and that's what you are. You are made up of atoms that then spin and become molecules, which then spin and become cells and tissues. And then, you know, here you are and you look pretty solid. The reason you look solid is just because of the light refracting off uh, or uh, reflecting off of those, the outer shell of the spinning molecule, uh, electrons in the atom. And the only reason that you feel solid is because of the force that spinning that is too much, then the forces pressing against each other are too much that keeps you apart. That's so cool. <laughs> so cool. But that's science. It can kind of make your brain freeze a little bit if you yes. haven't studied physics and all of that sort of thing. Um, and, and that's, I mean, I'm not a scientist, but I love studying with the scientists that can really illuminate that for me. And then I bring it back and create my understand or not create, ground into my understanding of it and then try to teach that using metaphors that just never quite get there but it, it's the closest that you can come right to understanding that but you really can the the beautiful thing about taking an energy medicine yoga class is you can start you start to feel it you start to feel that expansiveness and that infinity ness and you start to feel the the shapes of you you know it's okay so can i geek out on science for a moment absolutely okay. so you know we're only energy okay but if you really go if you start to look at biologically like how we are created right from the dna what is the dna deal it gives instructions to the proteins to bend to to create right but what does a protein do to differentiate a protein folds and how it folds is how it becomes one thing or another. So it is actually the shape of the protein that then describes what it is going to go on to do. And that builds and builds and builds until you are who you are based on what your proteins differentiate to become, which is based on the shape, which is previously based on the charge, but that's a whole other podcast that we have to have. So it's the shape of the protein. And if you extrapolate that it's like your shape and how you shape and fold and move your body is part of the expression of your health and so that leap from your proteins folding up into being you folding yourself in a yoga practice and i don't mean the crazy yoga that you see on instagram that's not the kind of yoga that we do in energy medicine yoga it's very accessible um, but you start to see that that the form of who you are follows the function of what you do and how you express. And so that science really starts to make sense, even though it can feel really um, just a little out there, a little Star Trek-y. You know, all of those science fiction things that we read and see kind of show us who we are. We just haven't caught up to them yet. I fully believe at some point in our future, we will have Star Trek medicine where you step into a booth and it just goes and it looks at your whole field and it sees a fluctuation in the field and it smooths out that fluctuation and, and that's 
to your cancer diagnosis and cure all in that one moment in the energy field health care i'm right there with you i think right? it's, it's, it's coming possible too for yeah. sure and yeah, then I think so many of us are starting to understand the energy aspect of it and the, well, the holistic part of it, the, the mind, body, spirit, I mean, just the healing of all of it and um, how powerful that is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So now do you do online classes that people can connect with you? Do you do programs? And then the other part of that question is, is this something people can work like buy your books and you walk through the process of, of doing um, this sort of work? Yes. Oh, yes to all of that. So you can find everything on our website, energymedicineyoga.net. And we have classes and courses. We offer teacher trainings if people want to learn how to teach energy medicine yoga, if you're a yoga teacher. And um, the, the book that just came out, The Energy to Heal, is a program that takes you through, I mentioned briefly, the metal element with the skin that you were talking about, um, but it's, uh, it's a program that breaks down into five discrete points. So it's a seven-point program. You identify your issue, you run it through this five-point system, and then you uh, have your resolution and integrate your issue. And so that's the whole flow of the book. And we have a companion course that comes out June 7th. So I'm not exactly sure where this will land with your listeners, but we will um, have another release of that course again at some point in the future if you miss this first one. And that course kind of illuminates the book and, and brings the book to life. Some people really um, learn better with through that sort of interface. Mm -hmm. But I will say this, the book is complete in and of itself. You don't need to take the course. That's just if you want the videos and you want to spend an hour with me live every week and, and you know talk through things. But the book really is laid out in a simple, accessible way that you can jump in and, and start working with whatever issue that is presenting for you that you want to resolve. And I'll give you an example, a friend of mine and um, the caveat that she is my friend, so she wants things good for me, but this is not why she called me. She called me like two or three days after she'd gotten the book, and she said, you know, I'm only halfway through, and I already think this book has saved my life. Oh. And she had already run the program a couple of times on this issue that was really, really, really challenging for her in an interpersonal relationship. And she found that first night that she read it the missing piece she put it into play and resolved it something that had been like was potentially about to kind of change the whole makeup of her whole family and she was able to find this resolution and um and go forward so you know you you can just you can just read the book and get the tools that you need for whatever is up for you right now so yeah it's really accessible Wow. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And I want to ask you a question. I don't know, well, depending upon the answer, if I keep it in here or not, but I just want to ask you a personal question. So I had told you that I, I've tapped my toe into doing yoga, right? And I had some beautiful experiences and some beautiful, like a friend was, was doing one, had an adorable little yoga nest, I think she called it, and a wonderful little studio. And I really felt found some connection in that but as a trauma survivor and someone who was for a very very long time like i'm talking 40 something years of being afraid in my own body of the scary sensations that were there until i did the healing work i had found myself in a yoga class and it was one where i was laying flat on my back on the floor and uh whatever we were doing I had an overwhelming sense, and I hadn't had a panic attack in a long time, of panic overwhelm my body because it came, I became very aware of being in my own body and realized there were still some things in there that I was terrified of. So is that something that you can work with to help trauma survivors learn to be comfortable in their own body and those scary sensations when they arise? Thank you so much for asking that question and 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 really, you know, putting yourself out there because that's, you know, it's a it's a big issue to talk about. And so I appreciate that. Um, on the, you know, the, the subtitle of the book is 
find lasting relief from stress and trauma through energy medicine yoga. So yes, trauma is where this book came out of, healing my own trauma experiences finally and completely and really understanding what that means. After spending a lot of time in a lot of yoga classes that say they're trauma informed, but not, I don't think yet anyone, and this is part of my mission, is talking about trauma healing just trauma informed, which means, you know, we know you need a safe space, which is incredibly important. So let's pick that apart. The first piece, and I write about this in the book, right at the beginning, and then also in the appendix at the very end, for trauma survivors, who honestly, let's be honest, is most of us, right? Most of us have had some kind of trauma. However, having trauma in the physical body, it does exactly what you said, you feel unsafe in your own body. And that is uh, one of the first pieces that you need to reclaim in terms of healing. And, and that is something that I talk about all through the book. If you've experienced trauma in your own body, here are some things that you can do. And I give you that right up front because it can feel really unsafe in your own body. And your body is home base. So if you don't feel safe in home base, nothing else is going to come out of that that's going to nurture you and support you um, uh, on on your life journey at all right which is why trauma survivors have so many challenges in life itself and i speak from experience and i know you do too so there's just the basic things of that trauma informed you need to know about and that is and i know you know this but because it comes from that hyper vigilance right making sure you always know where the exits are, making sure that you may be not closing your eyes when everyone else is closing their eyes, making sure the teacher knows that you don't want to be touched when they do adjustments. Do they play music? I don't, I, if I have a class that has music, I might be away from that. I don't want to go to that class with the loud music or the drumming, right? So that can really be triggering. Meditation practices, sitting on the cushion, close your eyes and sit still and don't think. Okay, that's really triggering for anyone that's, you know, processing trauma because as soon as you sit still and close your eyes, poof, right, that's the floods come back. So all of those things are um, ways to understand, and that's what I talk about right up front if you're a trauma survivor, um, making sure that you're safe. And then the practices in the book walk you through how to come back into that feeling of, there's one thing of being safe in a class, but being safe and at home in your own body. And the I'll share with you right now if it's okay, because it's really important. If you never, all of you watching, if you never buy the book and you never do a course and you never do a class, it's okay. It's fine with me. I want you to be happy and good and, and strong in your own life. So I want to give you this one thing no matter what. Take this with you. If you're having a stress response or you're finding yourself sliding into your trauma response from a trigger or something like that, Here's your first thing you're going to do. One hand over your forehead like you're taking your temperature. And you're just going to hold. You're just going to hold here and breathing in the nose and out the mouth. And just those two things, this hold, breathing in the nose and out the mouth, is br brings that trauma response, that stress response, which re are, are almost identical. Trauma response and stress response in the body are almost identical. So brings that down, allows you to stay really present. And the longer you do this hold, you start to rewire those trigger responses, that fight, flight, or freeze response, that um, limbic loop that trauma survivors have that get triggered and, and throw you right back into the same physiological response, which floods your body with stress chemicals, starts to break you down, and all those feelings, fear, anxiety, whatever your stress response is, this starts to interrupt that. So your story is your story. Whatever happened to you, that is not going to change. But the more that you do this hold, the more that you start to reprogram in other energetic ways, the more that that becomes just your story. This happened, and then that happened, and then that happened, and you tell that, and you're not triggered anymore. And then it becomes, de depending on you and, and your path and your dharma in life, for a lot of us, and I'm going to include myself here, if you've survived something that is incredibly challenging, that 
shifted your life from the path that you thought your life was going to be on, which is one of the definitions of trauma. Many of us find that part of the healing and salvation comes from how we then relate to that event, how we tell the story of that event, how we reframe and recalibrate that event. And so that can become, I don't like that that like, did that have to happen? And you are who you are because that happened. I mean, I am who I am because that happened, but would I have wished it not to happen? A hundred percent. I'd give it all back. <laughs> take the books, take the yoga, all of it, right? To not have gone through what I've gone through. And I've gone through what I've gone through. And this is the result of that. And so the practices then bring, I'm just going to speak personally, me to a place of peace. But prior to that, that self-love again, so that, you know what, it happened. I'm not going to change that, but I am okay with it. And I love myself now and I love the life that I'm in. And so it is okay. It is okay that all of those things happened. I don't live in like I wish and regret and, and anger. The world is so unfair. All of those things are true. The world is incredibly unfair. And this is the unfair. Fairness that happened to me, it's different than the unfairness that happened to you. And what do we do with that? We still have to move forward. And so can you, it's, it's more than making lemonade out of lemons. This is your life. And so can you find a place to anchor into and joy? And, you know, next week I get the great opportunity of, of speaking again with a, um, Olympian, three-time gold medalist, Tiana Madison. And if you've read her book, um, Survive and Advance, that's the name of her book, right? She has been through incredible horror trauma. And her dharma now is to help other people. And I find that often with a lot of trauma survivors yeah. is their, their dharma now is to support and help other people. And part of that helps themselves. It helps me to help you because you being healed helps the world and that makes me happy. And I can't change the past. I can only be in the present and move forward into the future that I want by not being triggered and so anchored in the past that I'm, that I'm stuck, that I can't move forward. I'm still connected to it. I'm connected to it as part of my story, but not as what defines me or holds me back. That was a really long answer. I'm not no, sure. No, it was, I, all I kept thinking is like your words are touching my soul and it was just such a soulful, beautiful answer. So thank you. And I have to ask just in case anyone else experienced it, who's listening right now, when I put my hand on my head, one, it felt like I was hugging myself, but, but like hugging my spirit and two, my eyes welled up with tears. Like I, I felt an emotional release. Like I, I, I was trying, I was not trying not to cry. I was just allowing it to be, but I was like, oh, any second now, like these tears are just going to start falling down my cheeks. Yeah. You know, there's a, a really beautiful, one of the things that I want to encourage all of your listeners, again, whether you buy the book or not, I want, I want you to be healed for you, for you. You deserve to feel good. You deserve to be free. And I, uh, what I see over and over again with so many students is, and just people in general, not even students of mine, we have this fear of, of the healing itself. I can't, I, I, I know I need to deal with my trauma, but it's too big. It's too much. I don't have the time. I don't have the bandwidth. I don't have the energy. It's going to hurt. And that's really the most important one. I'm afraid that if I go back into my trauma to heal it or to deal with it it's going to be super painful awful the trauma was awful i don't ever want to look at it again it's packed right. up in a box and it's put on a shelf leave me alone i'm doing fine well the truth is that's not actually the case it is affecting you whether you're conscious of it or not and if you're not conscious of it it's affecting you in ways that um are trying to get your attention. How is your sleep? How's your digestion? How's your elimination? How are your relationships? How are your aches and pains in your body? How is 
you're healing. If you, you know, bump your knee and get a bruise, do you heal from it quickly or does it take a long time? Do you have old injuries that just keep, a, you know, grabbing your attention and, you know, do you just think, oh, well, that's just my old trick knee? Well, maybe, or maybe it's that issue that you haven't resolved because the issues go into the tissues. Energy is all there is, right? We established that early in our conversation which means that trauma is also energy and stress is also energy but energy has to go somewhere so you think about a bunch of cars moving down the highway boop 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 boop, boop. that's energy moving now you have a trauma boop 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 energies are going down the highway and then there's something that stops them and what happens they all start to pile up more and more and more and more and then there's this huge backup of cars now if you don't remove that trauma and help these cars then to move forward again what happens it just backs up more and more and more and more and more and then you've got a really intransigent full-on issue and there's a lot of science coming out that is directly connecting trauma to disease we already know stress is connected oh. to disease <laughs> right stress is the number one cause of diseases and unprocessed emotion is the number one cause of stress. And trauma is basically not, hmm, I don't want to say that. One of the hallmarks of trauma is unprocessed emotion. Yes. And so it's not a big leap to say that trauma causes disease. We don't have the mechanism to look at a disease pattern, whether it's cancer or Parkinson's or um, diabetes or upset stomachs and headaches, chronic things like that, and say, well, you have this trauma back here, we can trace it back, and this is exactly what it is that happened. It's sort of like whiplash. You get into a, a wreck and you have this whiplash, and then nothing happens. And you're like, huh, well, I guess that wasn't too bad. I'm, I'm stronger than I thought. And then a month or six weeks later, you're like, oh, What's going on here? I had this, wow, that's really weird. It feels like whiplash, but that was six weeks ago. It couldn't be connected. And that's a pretty close connection, but that's how long it takes for that whiplash to present. So it's not always so obvious what is causing what. And working with the energies, you can release those energies without going back into the trauma. To go to my point that you don't, have, it's not painful. It's more painful to hold it at bay or to pack it up and push it away and, and think that you're just beyond it because you don't think about it anymore. It is, I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's joyful. It is joyful to release the pains and the pressures and the energies that have been holding you back. Even if there are things that happen to you pre-verbal and pre-cognizant, if you've had your traumas at child which I had. I was born, they thought I was going to die at birth. I don't remember that. I was zero years old, you know, but that was a trauma that, you know, trauma affects your nervous system and how your nervous system interacts with you is everything. And so if you've got a nervous system that's going like this from birth for a whole long time, that's affecting you. And when you release the energy that's shaking it and you come into calm, Oh. It's a beautiful thing. It's yes. a beautiful thing. And it's yes. a joyful thing. And so I want to encourage you all to not be afraid. Don't be afraid of this work. It is the most gentle, the most easeful, the most freeing that I have ever found. And that's why I love it so much. I'm lazy and I don't like to be in pain. And those <laughs> two things coupled together, it's like, okay, I want an easy practice. It's going to feel good. Boom. I'm going to create it because it doesn't I'm exist. Sold. <laughs> yeah count me in all right yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i love it and well I, and i just have to say as you were talking so i i thought about my mom who's 86 and she had been a raging alcoholic my entire life and into her 80s and then her last hurrah at 82 laying in a hospital bed and i was just started talking to her about ACEs science and adverse childhood experiences and all that's coming up, what you just talked about, how things that had happened in her childhood and how it had impacted her on a trauma level and energy and all of that fun stuff. And 
once I started explaining, mom, you just can't box it up and put it on a shelf and pretend like it didn't happen. You always told me, oh, Terry, that happened in the past. Just let it go. Nope. Not the way that works. <laughs> nope. Mm-hmm. And once she started to really listen and understand, and then she started to share her traumas, she's now living sober. Uh, she did it in her 80s. So it's never too late. That's my message that I'm adding is a little exclamation point to all the beautiful words and the amazing wisdom you just shared is it's never too late to start on that healing journey. Oh, I love that story so much, Terry. That is so beautiful. That is so beautiful. Thank you. I love that. And it is, it is so true. We are, we want to heal. That is what the body wants to do. And it is certainly what the soul wants to do. And we can find that anytime. And, you know, uh, I, I, I listen a lot to Dr. Zach Bush. He's got some really beautiful um, uh, teachings and he's spent a lot of time working with um, uh, at, at deathbeds. Uh, there's a, um, a name for that and it just popped out of my head. But he's worked with a lot of people who have died and come back actually as well. And he's shared the, the experiences are almost exact across every cross-section that you could think of and basically what he has shared that happens is you cross over and you see that you are pure love and that you are loved and the universe loves you and that you only are love and those people who have come back have been i mean you know you read books about people who've had ndes near-death experiences and how it's changed their lives Yes, because to realize that you are pure love shifts everything and I've shared and it seems like a similar thing with your mom I've shared this with people like okay let's just assume we don't know what happens when we die let's just say that that happens let's say that that's what happens because we have a lot of you know data on that okay you find out you're pure love and joyful and you look back and you're like wow I wasted so much time hating myself that's a bummer real and I'm like okay wherever you are right now if that's the case let's go with it what if you could just do that right now and not waste the next 10 20 30 50 80 years hating yourself running away from yourself using coping mechanisms that are breaking you down like alcohol like drugs like food like sex like shopping like whatever we do that's when we do it too much all those things are great in moderation right What if we just did that right now? Okay, so that's an easy psychic experiment, and you can just say, yeah, I want to love myself right now. You're right, I don't want to waste another minute. Then grab this book, go to the YouTubes, go and do the energy work right now, because if there's anything that's going to get you there fast, it's working with your energy, because you are energy. So you, you skip a bunch of levels, and you just go right to the the root and i root is not the best metaphor either because it implies it's coming out of something but the energy is coming out of the energy so it's this loop it's this mobius strip of pure energy pure essence and that is where the the transformations happen easiest and yes it's never too late and it feels good and you're going to get there anyway at some point. It'd be just super fun. Wouldn't it be fun to get there now? Let's, yeah. let's get there now. Let's turn this ship around before we hit the iceberg. Let's get there now. And then we have a beautiful canvas to work on all of us together from a place of, of peace and joy and release and ease and freedom. And then we create and co-create the world that is satisfying for all of us. Yes. Oh, I could sit here and talk to you for a few more hours. It's amazing and beautiful. Yeah. And I say amen and hallelujah to all of it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anything more that you wanted to add before we close out? You know, that, that piece is really the one that I always add in is that it's easy and it's accessible. It works for everybody. There's no contraindications. Um, and it's, it's your birthright. You deserve to be happy. Yeah. And more than happy, 
Because that's sort of, again, that's one of these amorphous things like happy. Am I happy all the time? Right. What does that mean? <laughs> yeah, it, it's not so much, you know, I don't even think that's the goal is to be happy. I see on your side, you says choose happy, but choose presence. Choose to be open to your experiences. Emotions come and go. That's their hallmark. Happy comes and goes. Angry comes and goes. Peaceful can stay. Peaceful is like, I'm open. And this event made me happy. And I was happy for a couple hours. And then I was just present. And then, oh, I watched that show. And that made me really sad. If you just watched This Is Us in the finale, you're like, oh, that was so sad. And so beautiful. And oh, I feel all these emotions. That's why we watch these, you know, art and, and music. We want to feel things. But they come and they go. We don't want to grab on. So I say... Choose peace, choose presence and grounding. And it really is easier than, than you think. It's not, the struggle is to keep on with the stress and the traumas and just try to make it through the day. That's the struggle. The ease is releasing it. And I think the hardest part is just taking that first step because we're, I get it. I get how terrifying it is. But I promise you, healing feels so much better than dying. It really does. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, that's a absolutely perfect note to end on. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Terry. Absolutely. All right. Well, everyone, thank you for joining us. Oh, how do people connect with you? How do they find the book and all of that fun stuff? Um, you can find the book everywhere. Books are sold. And I always encourage you to go to your local bookseller in town and ask them to carry it and tell them to get another copy so that someone else might see it and, and grab onto it there in, in an actual bookstore. And, um, and then you can find everything that I'm doing on energymedicineyoga.net, all the courses and classes and ways to interact. I'm on all the social medias. I'm always on there too. I've just discovered Instagram Live. So now I'm just, I'm going to actually do one later today. <laughs> it's been like the funnest thing. Um, but so I'm always there. I'm interacting. I love talking to people. I love hearing your stories. And I love... I get so many letters and emails of people saying, I was at the end of my rope and now I've got a new lease on life. Oh. So if that happens for you and I know that it can and that if you just invest in yourself that it will, please drop me a note. Let me know that it did happen for you and let's buff that out into the world and create a world of, of healing and, and hope. Beautiful. Well, thank you again for the work you do, for shining such a beautiful light and holding people's hands and guiding all of us along our healing journey. It's just, uh, it's been a gift to have you here. So thanks. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. All right. Well, everyone, thanks for joining us today on the Healing Place podcast. And remember until next time, be gentle with yourself. Thanks. Bye-bye. Hey, everybody. Terry Welbrock again. Just wanted to thank you for listening to the episode today. And remind you to visit my website as well as the academy.terrywellbrock.com for the courses but if you go to my website terrywellbrock.com you can sign up for my monthly hope for healing newsletter which is also jam-packed with information and strategies and blog pieces and guest blog pieces and links to shows um, and just a great space for uh, again healing and hope Thanks for, again, being here and being a part of this healing space. I very much appreciate you. All right. Bye-bye.